Welcome to another episode of the Unique Paradigms podcast. Thank you for joining me in our discussion. Our previous Paradigm podcast episodes discussed professional contexts of identity, intentional thinking, self-concept. I do want to take a personal approach on our discussion of self-concept as it really did help define my research journey and exploring dimensions of identity. Self-concept overall is how we think, perceive, and evaluate ourselves. So my research focuses on dimensions of self-concept because it is a very personal process and learning different stages to a transformative process requires a stage of awareness, a stage of consciousness. And when we're thinking about elements of our professional lives, This is also an essential characteristic that also can extend into our personal lives where we can find ways to shift our paradigms and connect with our inner perspectives, morals, and understand how this influences and may shift our behaviors. So my research focuses on examining the interrelationship between independent and dependent variables. So I'm looking at different variables and how the magnitude is between those relationships. So that can include the individual, a population, also looking at gender. So when we're looking at relationships of self-concept, I am interested to see what the differences are between men and women, or taking it a step further, looking at different cultural backgrounds. And it is, in fact, an area of opportunity in the scholarly realm where there are even differences between research and paradigms that are shared, and even different behaviors between male and female researchers. So in addition to my identity research, I do have uh, additional endeavors of expanding research of affinities of Indo-Caribbean Guyanese, looking at gender differences, and that'll certainly be shared in future episodes. But the discussions that are sparked, I'm very happy to have shared my knowledge and research to support the platform for these conversations, for both personal and professional identity development. Personally, my journey towards self-concept started through my educational aspirations. I was across different industries, initially starting in fashion industries and then moving into more of a formal business structured education. But although I had a formal education, I still found ways to apply that learning in non-traditional ways, whether that was supporting art, supporting nonprofits, So there is a discovery process when we're thinking of identity development in a professional context, but also another layer of that discovery process when we're looking at the personal context, there is a unifying strand when we're looking at self-concept in these aspects of identity development. So the moments of self-concept can be pivotal to part of your personal and professional decision making. We should take time to reflect, understand our perceptions. And there were different times throughout my life where there were maybe more responsive or reactive decisions made because of my personal attachment to certain areas. If it was discrimination, if it was feeling a suppression of my cultural identity, I definitely, in early stages of my career, responded a little bit more sensitively or did not respond at all for fear of retaliation. But we will talk a little bit more about how self-concept will dive into aspects of authentic leadership as well. So when we're thinking about the relationship between self-concept, intentional thinking, self-effective, efficacy and professional identity. Understanding the differences between those relationships among genders and cultural backgrounds can also inform us on what we can look within ourselves or our environment 
to change, to help shift our own paradigms and our personal views. So as far as when we're looking at our personal aspects of development, it does require looking at your upbringing, your background. And I know for myself, coming from a Indo-Caribbean background and having an influence of Indian culture and the traditions that existed were heavily influential on my personal nature. So being more compassionate or really embracing the aspects of Hinduism in Tamil culture that was shared from generations prior to mine. But there is also a great difficulty that comes with these traditions. And I found those difficulties that it, as I was growing into my voice throughout my youth and being within a community where there is a difference between genders and a power struggle that exists between men and women, it does impact the development process, the timeliness of that development process. And if you add other issues that affect those communities, such as violence or addiction, then there is also another complexity added to that. I wanted to bring this discussion about We have a world mental health awareness. And I do want to extend these conversations on a global platform for us to feel confident in our voice, regardless of educational level, sharing those experiences are empowering. In Indian culture today, it is very difficult to find that voice as a young woman at an early age. But I've always found on a personal note that education was a way for me to explore new experiences in a world where when you are younger, you don't have as many abilities and you don't have a voice or sometimes it's suppressed. And if you add another layer of of viewing those circumstances, there is a societal differences between socioeconomic groups as well. So sometimes finding those pathways aren't always visible. And unless you socialize or find healthy channels to cultivate those traits and abilities, then sometimes the messaging is never received. So understanding throughout various stages of your life, what helps empower you is very important, whether that's culture, education, or maybe it's faith. But there are things that are more monumental when we're thinking about certain behaviors that we want to cultivate, especially if you're in an environment that doesn't have that. Being a part of a community where women were seen more of a as a maternal role instead of being more of breadwinners or having a a affluent career there was an expectation to have a stronger family dynamic marriage and children or finding a student role partner was always something that was stressed throughout any age group if you were unattached Also, when we're thinking about activism, being of a Indo-Caribbean background or Indian background, having the differences that we have or being from an LGBTQIA community, the support system is even more obscure, complex, and sometimes even non-existent. But we'll continue to shift paradigms, break these barriers, and offer further platforms for voices to be heard. As an activist for social movement, we can recognize where we can empower and outreach early, where we can share this independence of just allowing others to hear our voices or even just reading or listening to music. There are various ways that we can connect with each other. So I do have a great sense of pride and empowerment in 
how I've come to these revelations. And although I've taken now a more formal research approach, throughout early stages, it was through artistry, through education, that I did find ways to connect with others who have these experiences and understand what kind of vital characteristics help influence these leaders and these traits where they can feel empowered. So as we enter different stages of consciousness, start to take time to understand the basic dimensions of this multi-layered process that we have when we're self-reflecting and taking those steps towards greater consciousness. But when we think about aspects of emotions and how that impacts our decisions, our behavior, it does have a connection to our career. There are hierarchical needs that we have within our organization, whether it's a lifelong career or temporary career. We do have physiological, biological needs that are fulfilled through our environment, whether it's personal or professional. But there are motivations that we each have that we find in ourselves to take the transformative journey. So for me, the journey was personal. It meant the beginning of healing. It meant the beginning of understanding the various dimensions of my own professional identity and not confining it to one discipline area. So I have found ways to take a formal scholarly research and make that into a platform for others in my community to feel connected. And I did recognize the roles of power and control and the influence of patriarchal interpretations, especially coming from my culture. But there are also systemic issues that exist in educational systems, organizations, the public sector. But ultimately, we are the driver on how we interpret these different issues and what we can do to to create change both within ourselves or take it a step further within our organizations or our environments. For me, the pairing of passion with education has been an empowering process, but also remaining authentic was of critical importance. The discovery of different outlets was important because you do need to analyze, assess, evaluate the different dimensions of who you are and how each aspect of your own trait is being cultivated in each decision that you make. A development path is personal or it can be professional. You are the driver in discovering and taking time for yourself to understand those different layers of yourself of your consciousness, and developing an action plan, finding ways to improve your intentional thinking. Maybe that means finding a mental space where you can really have that conversation with yourself. And that is a vital step to the transformation process. The journey requires resilience, never-ending learning, compassion, and faith. But there are foundational aspects of identity development that can create pathways for change. Begin to use self-concept, intentional thinking as drivers for these change. Although it may be incremental, there is value in recognizing circumstances that are not allowing you to progress and using this to help you strengthen traits of consciousness, discipline, and self-concept. Being self-aware is an action when we internalize decisions that need to be made. The shifting of our own paradigm is the beginning of many new experiences in your transformative journey. Talk to you all soon.